Not only is this virus highly contagious, but it is also deadly. And this is the map or the results that the Chinese have put out with regard to the patent of disease progression in China. And there are three types of symptoms or patients, the mild, moderate, severe, and critical. And what you see from this is the patients that are severe and critical progress very rapidly to the intensive care unit and rapidly to death. This can happen as rapidly as three to four weeks. But it doesn't exclude the patients who are mild or moderate. While rare, it doesn't exclude them. And this chart, uh, again, of 44,000 cases uh, in mainland China has separated the fatality as it relates to age. And as one could see from this chart, the yellow is that greater than 80 and 70 to 79 and 60 to 69 are the predominant uh, patients who die from this disease. But unfortunately, there are deaths in patients who are 40 to 49, 30 to 39, 20 to 29, and even 10 to 19. So while it's certainly um, the majority of patients have mild symptoms, the young aren't protected yet from this fatality rate. And why does this happen? Well, the way this virus works is as it replicates and it becomes, um, overtakes this protective ACE2 receptor, fibrosis occurs, meaning scarring. And that's why 100% of these patients who have uh, fatalities have this ground glass effect in their lungs and there's no longer any oxygenation. The body tries to, to take this over, sadly, we end up then with what we call SARS, which is severe acute respiratory syndrome in which, in, in essence, uh, it is impossible for the body to get enough oxygen to the rest of the organs, and we have what we call multi-organ failure. This happens, unfortunately, not only uh, mainly in the elderly, but also those with pre-existing conditions. And as you could see, patients with cardiovascular disease, diabetes, respiratory disease and high blood pressure uh, have this pre-existing uh, conditions or are, are prone if they get infected to end up with SARS. We are now learning on a day-by-day -day basis what are the clinical effects of SARS. We are understanding and beginning to sort of see hypertension, severe hypertension, cardiac failure, and even a very interesting finding of uh, low potassium in the blood so the Chinese, again, are putting out this data in rapid fashion and allowing clinicians and uh, people who are looking after such patients to find ways to combat the SARS. It is also important for us to understand these are the patients who will require ICU. And we'll talk a little bit again about flattening the curve. We have, really have an opportunity as an entire community and as a country to not only flatten the curve, but not overwhelm the healthcare system so that the ICUs and this medical staff can be available to treat these patients, not only with these pre-existing conditions, but to take a patient from critical and severe all the way back to moderate and mild.